if you bought real estate if you bought any equity the odds were you have done well uh, wealth disparity has increased across the board luxury is freedom freedom to have the time to do what you want so you can choose between the three right money versus power versus fame hi nikhil thank you so much hi. for joining me here how are you doing there good how are you i'm doing well as well so you know i want to start out this uh, conversation with first talking about education right you stopped attending school after the age of 14 and i dropped out of college in bits pilani from this year itself and i was in third year uh, what do you think is the future of traditional education as people find more efficient ways to consume and learn from online sources firstly you know we were talking beforehand and i have to say this you had iit in your dreams all your life and you didn't make it by a whisker and you joined uh, bits pilani you and me are very different like uh, if we were in class together uh, you would be sitting on i don't know bench 1 and you would be the teacher's pet and i would be sitting outside the class kneeling down or something like that uh in in terms of education and what should change i, I don't really have a strong view on this or anything like that but i feel education has to be more holistic uh, right now we may be focused on one facet of what traditionally was considered education but uh, i hope the future of education will include all the different facets uh, like we were talking earlier i feel especially when we hire people in any company that i might be a part of uh the the one biggest roadblock we always face is communication skills and uh for some reason no college really focuses in that uh you might be a techie you might be doing a hundred different things but if you're not able to communicate well amongst your team with your team uh that might be one of the biggest roadblocks in you know like doing well at work and i i hope people focus more on that you talked about how you were working in call centers and you used to have a different tax company you were selling insurance to other people how did you get better at communicating you know yeah. i i think through a lot of missteps uh, also the fact that i've been speaking for so long just by virtue of age right like i'm almost double your age so i have been talking to people for a lot longer uh, outside of that uh, i feel one of the privileges of having done well at something or having been part of any successful journey is you get access to really smart people uh, uh each time i meet different from different uh, facets of life i find politicians uh the most well spoken intriguing interesting people because they were they've kind of had access to the best minds around by virtue of their position and the chair they sit on so i think through access to smart people uh, you kind of start to reciprocate how they are and maybe that helped me mm-hmm. my next question was about uh, retaining information you know you you read and watch and listen to a lot of podcasts and videos and books how do you retain uh, the information that you are consuming many of us consume a lot of content but we are not able to retain much of it so what is your process of retaining i don't think i retain much information like i might read a book with 500 pages and my take away from it would be 2 3 pages maybe uh so i don't think i'm specifically very good at retaining information or anything like that um uh, what works for me i feel like when i pictureize what i'm reading maybe sticks a little longer than otherwise but no i feel like i remember something today i think a certain way today Uh, i believe in a certain thing today and that entire premise will change when a new idea comes and uh, so that way i'm not very good at retaining information but i feel this constantly changing what you believe in uh, your thoughts on uh, life in general is not a bad thing i'm i'm okay with that change and i'm okay with kind of like navigating it in a very abrupt uh, organic manner Uh, do you read fiction as well uh, alongside not, not really yeah. right. i read history mm-hmm. which is kind of like fiction right mm-hmm. uh, but no fiction fiction in the pure sense right right i fell in love with reading exactly 8 years ago when i got to read about percy jackson and mm-hmm. game of thrones and other series 
that was really interesting to me uh, you know another question i was having is with most wealth managers not being able to beat the uh, index fund in the long term mm. what do you think is the usp of uh, you know managing funds all of these companies like you also have true beacon so what is the thing that attracts people or should be the differentiating factor from index funds well we are talking about a history of 20 30 years in india when we have seen a one way bull cycle uh, if you bought real estate if you bought any equity the odds were you have done well but history has not been as kind as the last couple of decades alone like if you were to be born in the 19 early 1900s and be part of the 1920 cycle you would have thought very differently uh, or you know 1940s uh, uh, so there are different periods in history where there are 10 year bear runs 20 year bear runs so what i look for an invest uh, what i look for in an investment manager is more risk adjusted reward uh, so i would never look at how well a fund has done in isolation but i would look at things like the sharp ratio how much risk did the fund manager take relative to that how much reward did he get uh, how well did he do in a bear phase because it's easy to do well when things are going well but i like the fund managers who do even better when uh, things are not going well mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in a, in a country like india where there is a huge income gap the top 1% makes a lot more than the bottom 80% how do you think people can learn the skill of making money because there seems to be a huge mismatch most yeah. people are doing the things that robots can do and automate while other people are focusing on working less but having a huge output having that leverage so how can people learn the skill of making money mm i would say that problem is true not just for india but uh, most countries in the world uh, wealth disparity has increased across the board uh, if you go back in time uh, in many ways you know we have witnessed communism we have witnessed socialism one could argue a certain uh, a certain branch of socialism at some level we have witnessed in our past as well uh, the one thing we kind of have to have consensus on is capitalism works right uh, with capitalism there will always be winners and there will be people who have not done as well uh, government's role probably has to be better distribution on the top uh, you know i've spoken about things like inheritance tax things uh, which can help uh, bridge the divide the divide will never truly go away but i think the divide has to also be kept in check uh, so you know that could be a way of uh, kind of like reducing this gap but in the sense of how do you help people make money i feel like uh, information is democratized today uh, everybody has access to the internet everybody has access to so much data and information uh, if someone were to research enough i'm sure they will get access to the right kind of information online mm-hmm. and uh, i feel like you know if you go back in our own history right back in the day brahmins in india kind of hoarded information right like information passed on from one family to another family or to their kids and stuff or if you go back to europe uh, you would have to go to these high end colleges ivy leagues to get access to a certain kind of information uh, in today's world relative to all of that i feel like information is more democratic in nature and it is available for anybody who truly seeks it mm-hmm. 99% of traders lose money in the long term right and still the yeah, the new investors are attracted towards trading and as you were also so what is that one thing that you want everyone to understand when they are getting started well i i feel like investing is a better approach for people to take than trading whoever asks me for advice i generally tell them that that you know go the path of investing versus trading because mm-hmm. the odds of success are so much higher uh people tend to and like to overcomplicate trading and investing what might be a better approach is you know you kind of set four or five rules for yourself it doesn't matter what those rules are but if you're able to be disciplined and follow them uh, your odds of being uh, profitable go up significantly mm-hmm. the biggest thing that kills traders is leverage right like if i were to give you for every 
hundred bucks you bring in, if I were to let you trade with thousand bucks or two thousand bucks, uh, your emotional state will make it very hard for you to remain profitable for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So definitely incorporate no leverage in one of those four or five rules and I think the odds of you being a trader go up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk about India becoming a $5 trillion economy. How do you think we can accelerate towards that and what needs to be done in India in the household for that to be accomplished sooner? In the household? Uh, I mean, what can you do? I feel like, uh, I mean, one suggestion would be, you know, the women participation in the workforce is abysmally low in India, right? Like it's lower everywhere in the world, but I think the number is a little bit worse in India. Uh, if a country has 100 people and 50 people are working and the GDP is say X, if you add 25% more people to the workforce, the GDP will go up by X plus X. So maybe that is one way. Mm -hmm. Understood. You talk a lot about uh, global warming and reducing the carbon footprint. For India, what do you think uh, that India as a country should do to reduce the carbon footprint and in general global warming that might happen in the future? It's increasing. Mm, this is a very controversial subject where uh, there is no answer A or B. Western countries have grown on the back of essentially, you know, uh, taking a resource from the planet. It would probably be unfair to say that the emerging economy cannot do what the Western world has done and we pay the price for it. Uh, but I'm guessing some kind of a middle ground has to be found. Mm -hmm. uh, when you compare emissions today between India and developed countries, India is still at the very bottom. So, uh, I don't think whenever, let's assume there's a carbon tax which comes out tomorrow, which mandates how much, uh, how much carbon you can put out there. I don't feel it would be right to have a country-wide number, but it would have to be more of a per-person number. Because by virtue of the scale and the population of our country, I feel like we need to be given more leeway uh, because of how the West has behaved in the last many decades. Mm -hmm. What is your definition of luxury? Uh, luxury is freedom. Uh, freedom to uh, go where you want. Freedom to have the time to do what you want. And freedom to choose who you work with. These things are luxury. You know, everyone in this day and age talks about investing your money whenever you get the salary as soon as you get it. And no one really talks about how can you spend money to get happiness. So what do you think, according to you, gets you the most happiness through the money that you spend? It's, it's strange that I don't think you should associate the quantum of money you spend versus the happiness it gives you. Uh, I love grocery shopping. So going to a supermarket gives me a lot of happiness. But that doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. You know, it might be something else for you. Uh, I think people have to figure out what it is for them mm -hmm. and uh, live by their own rule that way. So according to you, it is grocery shopping and... For, for me, like, yes. you know, like for me, uh, happiness would be uh, things like grocery shopping. Uh, it is not as personal as it once was. There was a time in life where I would wait many years to buy that one particular thing which was expensive. And then buying that expensive thing would give me this fleeting uh, couple of minutes of happiness when, you know, whatever you buy, right? Like you might wait for five years to buy a certain thing. Uh, as soon as you have bought it, one month down the line, you're looking for the next thing. And the happiness you derive from that goes away very quickly. Uh, luckily or unluckily for me, that phase seems to have kind of like passed in my life. And now happiness is not in buying uh, things from a relative standpoint. but uh, I wouldn't feel happy buying what I think others want. I would probably feel happy buying what I truly want. And, mm -hmm. and that definition is broad. It could be grocery shopping one day. It could be uh, going and buying sneakers another day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think uh, should people do to avoid lifestyle upgradation? Like, you know, as you get more money, as you success, as you succeed in your career, you get to 
have more opportunities and options to spend mm. right and then the problem is that you still end up with the same amount of money that you previously had now just you're spending a lot more how can someone avoid in this whole trap i think consciously you don't change right like don't get a bigger car a bigger house a bigger stuff beyond when you're happy mm-hmm. the definition of happiness is different for everyone but uh at the very crux of this problem i think in isolation we do not know what we want uh my idea of what i want is based on my surroundings based on the influences that have affected me Uh, so maybe the key is not to be competitive and try to want what others want for the sake of wanting but more to figure out what you really want and be happy with that so you know uh, i tweet a lot on my account and one of the best performing tweets i've had is what is one thing that school never taught you or failed to taught you and people the most common answer that i get is filing taxes or investing or personal finance What do you think about this? Should this be something that should be taught from an early age, or should this be something people just explore on their own and then go ahead with that? Yeah, no, definitely. I think people should teach how people should teach kids how to manage money earlier. Uh, we kind of spend fifteen years teaching someone how to make money, and we spend very little time teaching them how to manage that money. That can't be right. And I hope people start teaching money management skills at you know middle school and uh, at younger ages. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, back in January 2021, with the GameStop short squeeze, if you have been looking at that, uh, what is the thing that you learned from that whole event that happened with Robin Hood and, and things like that? What can people learn from that in the finance domain? Sentiment above all. Uh, stock prices are still very much a factor of uh, mass psychology, uh, and I think. if mass psychology is trending in a certain direction you never bet against it mm-hmm. awesome so i have a couple of rapid fire questions a lot of them kushal has already asked uh what is so you can choose between the three right money versus power versus fame what would you pick maybe money mm-hmm. what is the worst financial advice that you heard mm worst invest in real estate what is the best financial advice that you heard mm, diversify and why is that everything is cyclical you know uh, every asset class does well at one point and does not do well at another point uh, it's terrible to be stuck in a asset class which is underperforming if you have all your money in it mm-hmm. indian stocks or abroad uh you know opportunities which you think has more opportunity at this moment while we speak i would say like abroad cuz they are all down 30 40% and we are where we were right mm-hmm. so they seem relatively cheaper understood what is the best skill that you think a 20 year old should learn when they're getting into their career hmm i think you need to figure out what you're good at and what you're bad at in the mm-hmm. in the true sense of the word and then pursue what you're good at How can someone get more curious about the world? I think curious curiosity is very like uh, innate to human beings. It's very much a part of who we are. We're all very curious as kids. I think society and life kind of takes the curiosity out of you. Mm-hmm. So I think you just have to like condition yourself to want to know what you don't know. Right. What fascinates you the most about investing in finance in general? Every day is different. Yeah. Rhymes doesn't repeat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Doesn't awesome. even rhyme. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nikhil, for Thank this you. podcast. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Thank you. Thanks a lot.